And we are going to start talking about the NFC North. And we'll start off with the Green Bay Packers. Good old Aaron Rodgers, always in the news, always something going on. Last year, of course, it was the draft that got Jordan Love. And this year, uh, it was draft day. Of course, Adam Schefter decides to drop his bomb and and whatnot, which uh, get get a little opinion here. What did y'all think about the fact that uh, all of that was just news that accumulated and he just decided to drop it that day? I think he was told by Aaron Rodgers, I want you to release this the morning of the draft. I don't think it came from Aaron Rodgers. I, I, well, okay. I bet it came from Aaron Rodgers' people. Yeah, I had to. Uh, I think it just stewed up and you stewed up. You embarrassed me on draft day of last year. I'm embarrassing yeah. you. Yeah, and, you know, we're getting into this right now with this. This is like, you know, you ever tell your kid, hey, when I get when I come back in here, this room better be clean, and they just go complete F you and rip everything off the yep. walls, and it's an absolute mess? <laughs> That's what the Packers did in the first round here. So the news comes out. Look, I'm pissed. You never draft me wide receivers. Instead, you trade up and draft a quarterback in the first round last year. So I'm telling everyone, there's no way the Packers aren't taking Elijah Moore right now with this pick. There's no way they have the balls to not help Aaron Rodgers in the first round. And they're like, you know what? We're ripping the sheets off the bed. We're ripping the paintings off the wall. We're taking Eric Stokes out of Georgia. And they already have a solid secondary. The, the, the <laughs> defending the pass was not the Packers' problem. They can't stop the run. They can't they stop Kevin the run. King. They, they, they can't took stop a, the run. They took a quarterback. They took a corner, and not even the best one available at the time. No, I don't no. understand. No, it was a ridiculous the reach. They, so they so the just, Packers, by the way, to get through the, the whole spiel, they yeah, were 13-3 and three last No, you're good. 13-3 and three last year. Uh, they needed offensive tackle. They needed wide receiver, linebacker, defensive tackle, and then cornerback, maybe. But at 29, they take Stokes, and it is a... <sighs> Massive reach. I mean, you you have this was a mid second round guy that you that you took towards the end of the first round. For no, I mean he's he's speedy. Like it, you're not going to get beat over the top with him. But I don't think that you can reasonably justify this at all. It makes no, no. sense whatsoever. So round two, it, things a, a little better. Josh Myers, center out of Ohio State, wide receiver Amari Rogers out of Clemson in the third round, tackle Royce Newman out of Ole Miss in the fourth. Fifth round, they go uh, interior defensive lineman Tedderell Slayton out of uh, Florida. He was a decent pick, I guess. Uh, but all of these are basically flyers in the fifth, sixth, and seventh round. Quarterback Shamar Gene Charles out of App State. Tackle Cole Van Lannen out of Wisconsin. Linebacker Isaiah McDuffie out of Boston College. And then running back Kylan Hill out of Mississippi State. A uh, lot of stuff that they didn't particularly need, I don't guess. Like linebacker, yes. Tackle... Uh, Cole Van Lannen, like uh, you want to take an offensive lineman, Notre Dame and Wisconsin, those would be the spots to get them from. Uh, I just, you know, you took two quarterbacks in this draft. Why? I mean, uh, <laughs> okay. So first of all, the Packers have been frauds for the last two years. They didn't belong in the NFC Championship game in either game, and they actually came close to beating Tampa Bay if it wasn't for that missed pass interference call on the Sean Murphy bunting interception. Yep. You might be talking about. Green Bay in the Super Bowl, but this team's a fraud and they can't stop the run. They only have one weapon they can give the ball to and Devontae Adams. I don't care what people say about Aaron Jones. He's also a fraud. Sometimes he's effective in the passing game. This team, I know we weren't giving out grades. This team gets a big fat F. They failed. They failed. They failed across the board. And I love the little, hey, Amari Rogers looks like he might be a fine player, but was this a little stab as well? Like, hey, if you're going to be gone, we'll still have an A. Rodgers on this team. We'll have an A. Rod and we'll go with this young kid. I don't know what the hell this front office is thinking. It's outside of the Texans. This is the worst front office in the entire National Football League. They have been for a long time. I think the only really good move they ever made was drafting Rodgers late and signing Reggie White to like the first ever free agent deal. Other than that, this team is – their front office is complete garbage. I don't blame Aaron Rodgers for wanting to get the hell out of here. This is not a 13-3 and three team. This is just a team that played in a terrible division against weak opponents and no defenses and no quarterbacks. I just I hate what the Packers did. This is my least favorite organization. They've had the dumbest head coaches in the league since I can remember. Mike McCarthy, I know, I know that uh, Chris says Freddie Kitchens is the worst head coach. Mike McCarthy is the dumbest head coach who has ever, ever graced the sideline. The guy is an absolute moron top two bottom sorry Cowboys fans and Matt LaFleur I always think dodgeball cram it in your cram hole LaFleur because he's also a dumbass if I see Jamal Williams get 15 carries again I might blow my own damn brains out I can't stand the crap that this team does I thought they failed this draft absolute feel I for me 
even they, though they had, what, three times more picks than the Seahawks, I think this is the worst draft in the entire league. Wow. I, I didn't think they did very good. They're up there as one of the worst for me as well. I don't like this draft. I don't understand it. Um, I, I'm with you on, on these guys. Some of these guys might end up being pretty good players. I have no idea. Uh, it, it's just a matter of this this relationship. So you, you, the analogy I got is, is this is a divorce, okay? And, and I, I guess parent A will use for politically correct reasons – bought and has like a nice sweet ass old Corvette. All right. Worth some money. Parent B gets the Corvette in the, in the divorce. Parent A says, screw that. I'm just setting the son of a bitch on fire. Like, like Mm -hmm. I'd rather, I'd rather run it over with a cement truck than let you have it. So I'm just going to burn this thing to the ground. I don't, Mm -hmm. I don't really know what's going on. This is why, by the way, some teams have terrible owners. All right. Some teams just have, God awful owners that won't get out of the way, but at least you have somebody who's yeah. responsible, who you can stand up and point to and say, that guy's fucking it up. Okay. Mm-hmm. Or that guy's fixing it. Or, we got a problem. You can storm the Capitol and you could say, listen, well, I shouldn't use the word storm the Capitol, but like you could, you could <laughs> make, you could make a statement to an individual and say, I'm not happy as a fan base and we need change. We need you to do something different. And with green Bay, you can't really do that. Like there's not one owner. There's not one guy. It's the only one that you can point to is a goon to have a CEO. Yeah. That's, that's it. That's all you can do. And I, I don't, I'll tell you this. The reason why I don't like it. And as I've said in some of these other videos is I will like your draft. If I can understand the strategy behind it. Right, if go. I can see, yes. it, and I don't even have to like the strategy. They, they I just have to see the pair. strategy. The, their only strategy should have been kissing Aaron Rodgers' ass so he doesn't leave that organization, and they couldn't even get that right. Well, hang on, it was hang laid on. out in plain so black and white. Let's say you know Rodgers is gone. Let's say you believe him leaving, and you know this relationship is broken. If this is your plan for the team for life after Rodgers, this is not setting Jordan Love up for success either, my friend. No. Like, no, it's not. That, like, I'm not even saying there's a world in which they know this relationship cannot be fixed. This is a man that doesn't talk to his mother, all right? Do you think exactly. that he's going to forgive you? Like, <laughs> exactly. just, some, just some random and listen, guy I'll, that's a I'll, GM? I'll go, out of the, uh, I'll go out of the parent A and parent. I'm a divorced man, and let me just tell you what. Aaron Rodgers is the wife, and he's taking half their shit. That's exactly what's oh, happening. I think he's taking more than half, baby. He's yeah. getting alimony on top of child support. My ex-wife <laughs> even took my crock pot, and I love that yeah. damn thing. So I know exactly what's happening here. Uh, parent A and Parent B is per- pretty damn clear what's happening here, and he's yeah. setting it on fire. And I don't blame him. Packers, yeah. god awful. Oh, it's, this, this is, yeah. I don't. I'm, I'm with Gary. Even if I disagree with your strategy, but I at least see what you're trying to do. Yeah. I can forgive it because I might be wrong. We have different strategies, and, and I'm not a GM. Mm-hmm. You are, and so good luck to you. I don't even know what their strategy is. That's Apparently, a, yeah, it's it, Jordan it, Love to Marquez Valdez Scantling for seven drops a game. I don't, I don't believe him though. I mean, what a just a dreadful receiving core, dreadful so, team. So let me ask you this: So you do a lot of props and you do a lot of this stuff. Do you just blindly take all the Packers unders this year with hopes that even if Rodgers plays, he's just pissed off? He's just screw it. I don't give a shit anymore. Yeah, yeah, and Aaron Rodgers is that kind of guy. You ju- you just I mean, talked I think, about it. I think there's a world in which some people say, "Oh, I want him pissed off because then he'll go out and wreck the league." Yeah, that that's what he did year. last year. Yeah, or he could that's just empty la- the bank account on his way out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, this, this year he's got Jeopardy, and he loves that hosting the Jeopardy. I'm telling you right now, it will not shock me if he's like, you know what, fuck you guys, I'm going to host Jeopardy for a year. I don't I'm know Carson. that he's going to be the host of Jeopardy. <laughs> he should be. I love it. Yeah. Absolutely love you it. You love Same it, here. but I don't know that the people who actually pay the bills at Jeopardy love it. Yeah, we'll, yeah, there we'll you see. Go. <laughs> Who knows? I, did y'all see he's going to be on like the uh, the Connors or whatever this week, like the uh, oh the Roseanne God. spinoff thing, whatever. Like, but he's <laughs> he's on it as the host of Jeopardy. Like it's <laughs> yeah, it's I'm really weird. You, he loves oh, the Jeopardy thing. That's like that show's like based out of Chicago, and so I wonder yeah. how they're going to like fit that in because they're supposed oh, yeah. to hate him because they're big Bears fans. Yep, we shall God see. Is, we shall see. All right. Speaking of the Bears, let's go ahead and discuss it. Um, I, I think, you know, I, I'll go ahead and tell you, I think I'm a fan. You know, they went eight and eight last year. Uh, they finally said adios to Trubisky. He is donezo gone. 
They needed quarterback. They needed cornerback. They needed ta- uh, tackle, wide receiver, defensive tackle. And, uh, and you know, I, I think I think what they ended up doing, I'm okay with. They they trade mm-hmm. up, and they go ahead and go get their guy in Justin Fields. They they made sure. Like, I, we were all a little shocked at, at the fact that Justin Fields was dropping, but I could understand it, right? And Chris, you and I talked on the show about this. We talked with the, uh, the, uh, the, the West Lap Pirates guys about this, and... Fields holds on to the ball for a long time. It takes him a while to process uh, the field as it's going, and it leads to more sacks. It leads to like that, but it's it's something that you can get past. This is the same kind of thing as like a Ryan Tannehill situation, but he's way more athletic than Ryan Tannehill. So I, I think that you can work with him in your offense. He could even be the starter in Week One, and I think they would be just fine. I think they would be improved over what they were last year. So you go up, you get Justin Fields at number one. You get tackled Tevin Jenkins out of Oklahoma State. That was an incredible value pick yeah, uh, in that round was a two. Huge pick. But then yeah. they they had to trade rounds three and four and whatnot. They get those out of the way, and then the rest are basically just flyers between five, six, and seven. They got Larry mm-hmm. Borum, offensive tackle out of Missouri. They got Khalil Herbert out of Virginia Tech, which I loved, absolute love. He is a he's a lightning bolt. Um, Daz Newsom, wide receiver out of North Carolina, again lightning bolt, it, extreme playmaker. Uh, Thomas Graham. He's talking about just stupid athletes. Those last two picks. Oh yes, cornerback galore. Yes, cornerback Thomas Graham Jr. out of Oregon in the sixth round, and with pick number two hundred and fifty, Kyrus Tonga out of BYU, interior defensive lineman. He is. uh, All of these were were good. Like I, I I love Mm -hmm. all of this. Thomas Graham opted out last season, but he he should have been a a round two or three guy. He should have been a day two guy, and he dropped all the way to the sixth round. Uh, they they got some value with these picks. Yeah, I love with the bear. You could have stopped right there at one pick. They could have traded their whole draft for one pick, taken Justin Fields, and the Bears won the first round. Plain and simple. Listen, you cannot go into the season with Andy fucking Dalton as your quarterback. Andy Dalton is absolute trash on the field, especially in a primetime game. You do not want to go watch the Bears play on Monday Night Football as a Bears fan with Andy Dalton as your quarterback. You're going to get beaten 40-3. to He's going to throw four interceptions. Justin Fields absolutely 100% has to start game one. Matt Nagy knows it. Ryan Pace knows it. Their jobs are on the line. And for once, this front office did something good. And I agree. I love the Tevin Jenkins pick in round two. I thought the Bears absolutely killed it getting Justin Fields. I was really proud of them. I was happy for Bears fans. Uh, great job by the Bears. You could not, and they were even taunting their fans. I'm like, this is a dangerous game you guys are playing, t- tweeting out Andy Dalton. I don't know what the hell you guys are doing, but everyone knows the red rifle is more like the red water pistol. He's cost me so much money. If Andy Dalton <laughs> was on the side of the road in the snow, broken down, and he had three little kids wrapped up in aluminum blankets, I swear to you on my life, I would spray snow on them and drive right past and enjoy every single second of it. Can't stand Andy Dalton. Great job by the Bears getting Justin Fields. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. Um, yep. This is a little bit of a mixed bag for me. Like, this is a weird thing. You're talking about an organization that I really like and I have my entire life. But you're talking about a front office and a man in Ryan Pace that I loathe. And I, well, it's not that I hate yeah. him. I think he has been awful at his job. And mm-hmm. to allow him to give away the picks that they had to give and do all the things that they had to do to get fields – and now we're sure. going to claim him the conquering hero? No, 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 no. No, he still mm-hmm. needs to be hurled into the river, all right? <laughs> I, I just can't handle it. I can't have Ryan Pace marching down the streets of Chicago and people heralding him as the man that went and got Justin Fields. Because if you look at all the draft picks that he has pissed away and wasted, <laughs> all the salary cap that they have paid, they traded away all the picks for Trubisky. They traded away picks and assets for Nick Foles and then paid Nick Foles a shit ton of money. They yeah. just signed Andy Dalton to another contract, pissed away money. All of these things this organization does. And then they finally do one thing right. And now mm-hmm. we're going to, now we're going to crown them heroes. No, no, I can't live in that <laughs> world. I can love fields. I can love this team, but I can still think that man is a bumbling idiot. And he's just one of the guys that said, Everybody's letting this guy fall. I don't think he should fall. We're going to go get him. Congratulations. You're not the biggest moron that day. Every other day of the year, you're the biggest moron, okay? So 
I love the draft. I like what they did. I hate Ryan Pace. I think he's terrible at his job. And if this pans out and this organization wins the Super Bowl, they should still celebrate by throwing his ass into the river. <laughs> hey, by the way, Andy Dalton was not awful last year. <laughs> Andy Dalton was not awful. The Andy, hatred for Andy Dalton has gone too far, by it, the way. It certainly oh, has. You have never, you've never had a $100,000 right. $100, lineup on Monday night football. All Andy fault. Dalton has to do is complete your fault. There's passes. not a day in my life that oh. I've ever bet on Andy Dalton. That's on he you, bro. Me. That's on I you. Know. Why the hell are you betting an on Andy fucking Dalton? Oh, I don't know. I don't know, but I'll never do it again. And I preach it. You would have heard, should have heard the people last year, Andy Dalton starting Monday night football. I said, I promise you the Cowboys are going to get stomped. How could you, you don't know anything about Andy Dalton on primetime. I've watched plenty of oh, yes. Andy Dalton on primetime. Unless it's 10 a.m. on Sunday morning in Cincinnati, he can't do shit. Plain and simple. He is God awful. God awful. He had uh, 64.9% completion percentage last year, 14 touchdowns, 8 interceptions. Uh, QBR was not great, uh, 53.8. But, uh, you know, I, I don't think it was that bad. I mean, they went 4-5. Four, four of the six games that they won last season were under him. You know, yeah, I mean, 64% completions with the three, the best wide receiver trio in the league. It wasn't even close when you had, I mean, yeah. and he's still, I mean, it's painful to watch him drop back. It just makes my skin crawl when I see that guy under center. Oh, God, Andy Dalton. <laughs> and I do agree, right? I don't know who the bigger moron is. Is it Mama Bear who allowed those two idiots to keep their job? Or is yeah, it but uh, she's Ryan like a Pace? 90-year-old lady, though, so you can't blame yeah. her. I and mean, she doesn't still know what's going on. Yeah, well, hang on now. This is this is like some <laughs> con artist from from some foreign country calling and scamming your grandma. Okay, like yeah, you don't blame grandma for that. You blame those sons of bitches. Yeah, that's They're right. just that's con right. artists conning an old lady. Conning yep. old ladies. Uh, I don't even know how to transition that over to the Minnesota Vikings, <laughs> but we will do our best. Uh, the Vikings went seven and nine last year. Uh, not great under Mike Zimmer. Hey, Chris and I are massive fans of Mike Zimmer. We like what they've done with that organization. Mm -hmm. um, but Kirk Cousins, eh, you know, ha hasn't been, uh, has not been great the last, uh, mm -hmm. however, well, since he got there, basically, has not been great. Yeah. Um, they needed yeah. edge help. Since he they started needed... at any position, anytime, anywhere, <laughs> against any team that was competent in any way. Yes. There you go. They needed edge help. They needed guard. They needed tackle. They needed safety. And here's what they ended up doing they went and knocked out the tackle situation early. Uh, tackle Christian Derisaw out of Virginia Tech. I thought that was a fantastic value at number 23. They wait around until the third round, and then they draft quarterback Kellen Mond out of Texas A&M, which I thought was a really good spot. Terrific. They yep. kind of reached a little bit for Chaz Surratt, a linebacker out of North Carolina, but super athletic guy, former quarterback, who switched over to linebacker. He is, he's again, a lightning bolt. He's all over the place. He's not always in the right position, but he can hit. Yeah, but people. under Zimmer's defense, he'll be in the right position. I, I would hope so. Yeah. Uh, they took guard Wyatt Davis out of Ohio State in the third round. I thought that was a great pick. Patrick Jones, the second out of Pittsburgh, uh, edge rusher. That's a really good pick. Uh, Kene Nwangu out of Iowa State, running back in the fourth round. Cornerback Cameron Bynum out of California, uh, another cornerback in the fourth round. Another fourth round pick, edge rusher Janaris Robinson out of Florida State. Wide receiver, Amir Smith-Marset out of Iowa in the fifth round. Tight end, Zach Davidson, um, let's see, in the fifth round. And then edge rusher, Jalen Twyman out of Pitt in the sixth round, who I thought, personally, should have gone much higher. But, um, but yeah, I this is another one. I think they did really, really well with this. They hit basically everything that they needed, and, and they got value guys and guys that I think are going to make the roster and make this team significantly better. I, I completely agree, and I, you know, Minnesota holds a special place in my heart. It is my mom's favorite team. It has been my entire life. She loves the Vikings because she liked purple as a girl. I mean, she'll freely tell you that, and that's what that is. But I like this draft, and I like the tackle they got. One thing I will say, the problem with Minnesota, especially last year, they went with these young corners, Gladney and Dantzler, and they're not good. They're they're bad. You, they couldn't stop anybody. I know they brought in, you know, a shell of Patrick Peterson to maybe shore that up, but I would have liked to have seen – a little more capital early on on that defensive secondary because that was a massive, massive weakness for this team. However, getting Kellen Mond in the third round is a great thing. It's no secret for me. Even though Jimmy Garoppolo's only played one season for the 49ers, one of the happiest days of my life was when they traded for Garoppolo, and we all knew, thank God, they're not going to give a max contract to Kurt Bleeping Cousins because Kurt Cousins, <laughs> I just talked about Andy Dalton on primetime. 
1B who sucks on primetime and sucks in big games against winning teams, that's Kirk Cousins. Kirk Cousins cannot beat winning teams. You are never going to make a deep playoff run with Kirk Cousins as your quarterback. He'll be fine on a Sunday morning at 10 in the Superdome and the Silver Dome and smash up the Lions to Jefferson and Thielen, no problem. But if you put him against a good team or a good defense, that kid absolutely falls apart. He's a mental midget, one of the worst, worst big-time quarterbacks I've ever seen and the, the most over overpaid quarterback maybe ever. He's more overpaid than Keith Van Horn was that last year with the Dallas Mavericks when he didn't even play and he made 14. He's more overpaid than Bobby Bonilla is every year on the 4th of July. Okay, getting. <laughs> I mean, Kirk Cousins is grossly overpaid, and I like Kellen Mond. He was one of my favorite quarterbacks uh, in this draft. I actually, I know a lot of people are saying he needs to, I think he's very productive. I think he could play right away. And uh, it would not shock me if the Vikings start out slow. You see Kellen Mond come in, you see a completely different offense. Uh, overall, like what the Vikings did, love me some uh, Kellen Mond. And Derisaw, obviously, an absolute beast in the first round. Great pickup for them. That's going to help Dalvin Cook as well because they need to keep that guy upright You got that well. right. Hey, Chris, before you jump in here, Kellen Mond, uh, it, last year it was Justin Herbert that went number six overall. Uh, but he played in the NFL completely differently than what his offense was in college. In college, what Kellen Mond was was the leader of an incredibly slow offense that did not utilize uh, big-time plays, right? They, they did not use explosive plays in Jimbo Fisher's offense. Kellen Mond, I think, has all the tools to be able to do that. He is the guy yeah. in this year's draft that I could see looking completely different than what he yeah. did in college. College. 100%. Yeah. yeah. yeah go totally, ahead, I totally agree. I totally agree. I love the Kellen Mond pick. I love the Darisol pick. I think this team got a little better. I think those cornerbacks are going to be better. I think Patrick Peterson's brought in to be a leader in the cornerback room, not necessarily sure. to – but he's far and away from the man that he was when he was a lockdown cover corner, the best cornerback right. in, 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 in NFL history. He, he's not that anymore. He's just not. Um, right. But he can teach those young guys that they have in there and, 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 and really still be productive, just not – a lockdown number one dude. Um, I like this team. I, they did what I thought they would do, which is they went out and got athleticism. Okay. They got sparks guys. They got guys that, that their, their vertical is really good. Their long jump is really good. Like they're explosive type players. And that's what I like about how they drafted and, and, and what they did. Um, I'm with you. I don't believe, look, I don't, I don't think cousins is terrible, but cousins has a ceiling. Cousins is a team that can make you to a wild card game every year of his life. And then yep. lose that wild card game every year of his life. And then yep. he, because he wins just enough to make the playoffs, quote unquote, every year, you're never going to cut him. You're never going to, hey, like, why would you do this? So I, I would rather you be a bag of rocks for three years and me have wasted the pick. So I know I can throw you away and then I could go get something else. But when you make the playoffs every year, every year, every year, or just miss the playoffs every year, every year, every year, you're in the hunt. It's hard to get rid of that guy. Cause you're afraid yeah. of the unknown of not having that guy. And so I, I would rather live boomer bust. I think Kellamon's going to be boomer bust. I think he has a chance to be really good. There's also a world where in three years he doesn't play football anymore. Okay. That's true. But I'm okay with that. That's, that's the devil I'm okay with dealing with. Yeah. All right. Um, the other thing you, you said, uh, Kyle, about him being the OS overpaid, you need to go look into the amount of money Sam Bradford took from the NFL. Oh, that, yes, yes. Sam Bradford's a great, Sam Bradford, great when everyone, anybody stole a brings lot up of anybody. money. Anybody. No, the yeah. biggest thief in NFL history is Samuel Bradford. <laughs> That's a great point. That's a great point, and no I doubt, do not no, disagree. It, it, the, second, yeah. the second place person is really far down that rung. Yes, you are absolutely right. I don't know how he did that that many years in a row. He's a, too. He's a damn wizard. It was the, first, it was the very last <laughs> yeah. year – Sorry, it was the last year where they didn't have the rookie wage scale and rookies first round pick, first overall right. picks, whatever, got paid just an obscene amount, like a disgusting, gross amount of money. Yeah. And yeah. and so he got his first contract was ridiculous. His second contract was ridiculous. And then he yep. just got you know, pieces of He stole from contract. everybody. He stole from the Eagles. He stole from the Vikings. He stole from, he stole from everybody. everybody. That's yes, it. he did. Kyle, you brought up yesterday Washington back in the day taking Heath Shuler and Gus Farratt in the same draft. Uh, yeah. They did the same thing here with Kirk Cousins and RG3, and Cousins, of course, has made the mm -hmm. most out of it. So, yep. um, But, yeah, obviously making more money from the Vikings right now, doing his thing. We'll, uh, we'll move on to the last team in the uh, NFC North, and that would be the Detroit Lions. Went 5-11 and last year, had a coaching change. Matt Patricia uh, goes back to uh, the Patriots for basically a bag of chips. 
and they needed help basically everywhere. They they went and got Jared Goff. They traded away Matt Stafford in the offseason. Uh, got some picks. Got you know whatever. Uh, they needed wide receiver, uh, wide receiver, I guess, linebacker, quarterback, uh, cornerback, safety. You know, they just they, they needed dudes. And, and really anything in this situation would have been fine. They were trying to establish a culture under MCDC, Motor City Dan Campbell. And I, <laughs> I will go ahead and tell you, before I read off these names, I love what they did because I can see the strategy. It's the old school way of going about it. But I like what they did. First round, offensive tackle Panay Sewell out of Oregon fits their mentality perfectly. Uh, second round, interior defensive lineman Levi Onwazuriki, uh out of Washington. I hope I said that right. That's a tough name. Uh, but he's the one that came in and he was like, I just like hitting people in the face. Like, I, yeah, know? yeah, yeah. He said, which, I just like hitting people in the face. Which There's is awesome. no doubt he was going to be a Detroit Lion oh, when yes. he said that. Uh, third round, they yeah. got Aleem McNeil out of NC State, who plays the exact same way. Uh, third round again. Ifetu Belifonwu out of Syracuse, uh, another guy, cornerback, uh, that that plays, you know, tough, really tough player. Fourth round, wide receiver Amon Ross St. Brown out of USC. They needed wide receiver help. I think he's going to help with that. I think he fell quite a bit. Linebacker Derek Barnes out of Purdue in the fourth round. And seventh round flyer, they took running back Jamar Jefferson out of Oregon State. And he is a speedster. He's a small dude. But it, he packs a wallop when he hits you. And, and Chris, we watched him uh, multiple times. You remember us sitting in the sports book watching them against Oregon State. And he was, at, at that point, we thought the best player on the field. I mean, he was yeah. ridiculous. He looked better than Chua Hubbard did. That was the beginning of, like, the 2019 season. He was yes, unbelievable. Uh, I like what they did. I can see the strategy. I, I don't know that what they're doing is the way that the NFL is going now. But I think when everybody else is zigging and you decide to zag, I think that can be beneficial. I like what uh, what Dan Campbell and that bunch did. Yeah, and look, they literally they have a need at every single position on the field. They're not settled at anything outside of maybe uh, the young running back, DeAndre Swift, who still seems to have a little bit of health issues. But that's it. And this team has no wide receivers. I mean, nothing, no, nothing. So I was a little surprised they didn't try to get a playmaker early. Obviously, they didn't bring back Kenny Galladay. They were really strange at the end of last year. Like, we want to give some of these young receivers help. Then they release Marvin Hall, who is a terrific young receiver and a really nice pickup. Uh, I believe he went to Washington. Or did he go to Cleveland? One of those two. And then they sign Mohamed Sanu. I'm like, wait a second. That's not the young guy that we're – so I don't know who the hell Jared Goff's going to throw the football to. But it is no secret that they – Tyra Williams, Brashad Perryman. I, I can't believe you're not a Perryman fan. I mean, my goodness. No, I'm, God, you got you <laughs> kidding me? Brashad Perriman? I know he had the year with Jameis in Tampa Bay. What yeah. the hell ever. I mean, this is going to be a bad team, and there's no way they were going to be able to fix everything right here. So I do like that they addressed this from the inside out because the team could not stop the run last year. They couldn't block for Matthew. Matthew Stafford was, you know, Stafford's one of the toughest dudes in the league, and he's going to play hurt no matter what. And he was hurt no matter what because that line couldn't stop anyone from smashing him. And, I mean, they just can't stop anyone anywhere. So I I, I do like the strategy. I like getting Panay Sewell. A lot of people had him going as high as five to Cincinnati, so you get him a couple picks later. Lord knows you got to protect Jared Goff because we're talking about moving on from untrustworthy quarterbacks. The Rams did the right thing in getting rid of Jared Goff. He's an absolute bust, and it's going to be a long year for Lions fans watching him throw to – you know Tyrell Williams and Brashad Perriman. Oh, TJ you know who TJ Hawkinson are? will not be on my tight end radar for fantasy football so, next year. Typically, uh, you've got an idea of who the, the backup quarterbacks are. Do either of y'all know who the backups are? Or Jared Goff? Is it Chase Daniel? I don't know. No. Yeah. T- Chase Daniel's still in uh, Tampa Bay. Oh, okay, Tampa Bay. Okay. No, no, no. Okay. no. Blaine Gabbard's in Tampa no. Bay, isn't he? I'm about to say Blaine, Blaine Gabbard. Yeah. Blaine Gabbard. Okay, now Chase I have Daniel's no idea where somewhere. Ch- he, he's somewhere. Chicago, maybe? New he's Orleans? Been, he's he wasn't, made a lot of money. Uh, he's made he a lot was of in money. New Orleans, he's not now. It's, it's Tim Boyle, who was the uh, – he just came in from Green Bay, and David Blau, mm-hmm. who came in from Cleveland. He was like, what? Hey, the Thanksgiving Day Savior two years ago. David Blau was a oh, yeah. DFS monster that day. Came out and threw, threw two <laughs> early touchdowns on Thanksgiving Day. I was very happy with David Blau. Yep. But uh, yep. no, overall, I think I think they did the right thing here. Build inside out. This is going to take a few years to get things right in Detroit. Of course, they still need a quarterback. They need weapons on the offensive side of the ball. But the defense was so awful last year. Uh, I like I like that they went defensive tackle rounds two and three. Get get yourself a uh, you know a staple on that offensive line of Panay So overall, winning grade here, I would say for Detroit. 
Uh, I still think they need playmakers, though. Chase Daniels is in uh, L.A. with the Chargers. There you go. Oh, well, there you go. Just a little. Just collecting little checks there. again. Yeah, nice. <laughs> there you go. I, uh, yeah, just collecting checks, man. Just, yeah. just collecting, collecting checks. checks. Yeah, I, I like what this team did. I, I'm with you, and they, they have a ton of holes. I don't know that it equates to wins this year. Um, no. There's a chance that in three years, what they did this year is going to matter. It's going to be important. And when we look back in three years, we'll say that's where the foundation started. If that team can get to a above 500 you know, level of football, um, they, they still have a lot of holes, and they still need a lot of needs. But, Gary, you and I – talk about this all the time Kyle we believe that the way you build a team is from the front seven out on both yep. sides of the line that's exactly what they're doing and 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 I respect that I appreciate that um, if you get that foundation of guys finding receivers finding running backs finding DBs is easy okay finding a quarterback is very hard but you can run I mean we've seen not good quarterbacks make playoffs all the time. And so sure. you can get there with somebody who's well below average as, as long as you've built the rest of the team. Of Baker Mayfield. I mean, we just saw it with Cleveland, right? I'm just yeah. kidding. That's okay. No, I, no, listen, I told you, I'm I messing not, with you. I'm totally not, messing not, with you. You don't have to apologize. I, I am not a – look, I don't hate Baker anymore. I did. I did. Um, but, but, I, but I don't I'm, – I don't hail him as the savior, okay? I just, right. I just don't. So right. – Chase a little nugget while we well, I'm gonna spend 30 seconds on this. Chase Daniels with the Saints for two uh, three years, with the Chiefs for three years, with the Phillies for a year, with back with the Saints for a year, with Chicago for two years, with Detroit, and now with Okay, so he uh, was in LA. Detroit. I was like, I knew he was yeah. there sometime. Oh, he was he was there time. last year. Okay, yep. okay, good. All I'm right. trying to last look year. up. Uh he he has made thirty seven point <laughs> eight million dollars. And he has thrown a total of 261 passes in the NFL. Yeah. Um, Doesn't he get like $3 million for per touchdown or like $10 million per touchdown pass in the NFL? Something crazy he, like that. Yeah, he's had he's uh, like eight 12. touchdown passes. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Chase Daniel, that's how you do it right oh, yes. there. That's how it's done. You, oh, you stay up break, in the... Breaking news right now. Panay Sewell just tested positive for COVID. Oh, my God. Well, what what are the chances that it just came across? <laughs> that is good ridiculous. Uh, let's see. I am... All right, thirty-eight point seven or thirty-seven point eight million, whatever, um, divided by, let's see, two hundred sixty-one passes. That is, uh, that's about a hundred, almost one hundred fifty thousand dollars a pass. Oh my that's, God! <laughs> Even the incomplete ones. Think about that. You yeah. throw in the dirt. You throw a pick. I just got a hundred and fifty grand for that. Oh, that's how you do it. That guy is hustling at life. That's called winning. I you love Chase Daniel now. That. Uh, but yeah, so overall, I think we all like what the Lions are doing. Um, it's yeah. it's different. It's different than what everybody else is doing. Sometimes that can work in your favor. So they still they they need a lot of help. But I think this was a good draft to uh, to kind of get them headed in the right direction. So props Agreed. to MCDC gnawing some kneecaps off. We are all fans of that. Uh, is there anything else that we need to hit on for today's teams? I it's, think that's it. That is get your it. Brown Super Bowl tickets now. It's going to be the best odds yeah. you're going to get. Oh, my God. <laughs> all right, can let's get out of here. I, uh, Go follow <laughs> Kyle on YouTube. Uh, you can find his channel, DFS Bachelor. You can find him on Twitter, the same spot, at DFS Bachelor. You can find us at winningcureseverything.com. And, again, sbrpicks.com slash NCAAF, NFL, and MLB. Very simple to do. Uh, you can also find it, I think, at sportsbookreview.com, whatever you want to do. So go check that stuff out. Gentlemen, I appreciate you all being here today, and we have one more day to go tomorrow. We are hitting the AFC and NFC East, and uh, certainly not the least, I would say, but we had to wait all the way till Thursday to hear Chris's remarks about his Patriots. Um, no. But I'm, I'm excited about it. You know, he gets to talk Me about the— uh, he gets to talk about some Alabama players. So I'm pumped. Oh, yeah. He loves those Alabama players. <laughs> you better believe roll it. Roll tide, roll. Roll, roll tide. tide. All right. I don't actually What a, what a ridiculously that. dumb saying. <laughs> it is a dumb saying. That would, that would absolutely come out it. of Alabama. No doubt. I'm so tired of watching – people go, why don't you watch the Alabama game on Saturday? I'm like, well, they're playing Northeast McNeese yeah. State, and they're yeah, going to beat them 940 to nothing. Like, yeah. no, I only want to watch them play Clemson. Team. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Just beat the living crap out of them with no guilt whatsoever. Just shameful. Oh, wait a minute. Shameful, no, no, no. They'll go play a power five team. Oh, listen, bring in Duke. Bring in Duke. Let's kick yeah, the shit Duke. out of them. We played Duke. <laughs> we played an ACC team. What are you talking about? Poor Gary. We're just I love you guys. 
but I hate you all the same. So, uh, <laughs> so we'll end with the roll tide, but we'll also tell you take care of yourself, take care of each other, and hopefully all your tickets cash this week. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com, or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.